Okay, guys, welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about um, the buffer pool. We know from last time, or last lecture, that the database is going to store it on desk. But in order to manipulate data, in order to access the data, in order to process the data, you need to load them to the main memory. Okay? Then after that, do whatever you want to do, what kind of operation. Okay? Then after that, once you want to modify the data manipulated in the main memory, you need to write it back to the desk. All right? So now we're going to take a look here how the database management system achieved this goal. Okay? We are not, the database management system is not going to rely 100% on the operating system in order to take care of this operation. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the second part of finding how the database management system is going to manage its memory and move the data back and forth from the disk. Okay? So that's what we did. I just to give you an idea, the, the higher, high level, what we did so far. The first one we have what? We have the pages going to be as uh, the file is going to be stored as a sequence of pages on the desk. And we do have the page directory, which is going to allow us in order to navigate our query, to find out where the pages exist or not, and how can we find the page action on the desk. So in the high level, if any execution engine required to ask for a specific page, for example, said, I want a page two. In the page two, the first place the execution engine is going to ask, which is called the buffer pool. In the memory location, when it explains the buffer pool, how it looks like on side, okay? This is what the place said, do you have base 2 or not? So the buffer pool somehow is going to check to see whether the pages exist or no, base 2 in the main memory. If it's there, it's going to try and meet the pointer to the page. If not, the buffer pool is going to do what here? Now the goal is going to say, okay, the page does not exist, so I need to try to find out how to fetch the page from the disk to the main memory. And here the fetching the page is not easy operation okay sometimes the buffer board doesn't have any enough space in the memory to fetch a new page so that means in this case you're going to take care of what is called the replacement policy you're going to try to figure out to find out which is the victim whatever the page victim you need to get rid in order to free space for the new page okay you notice that the reading and the writing operation is expensive and since day one, we start to talk about the implementation of database management system, we said we try to do what? We try to minimize the effect of reading, uh, to say, uh, out of operation. Okay? There are high cost operations. Of course, when you say some high cost operation related to what? Related to whatever the operation in the in memory, all right? So we need or should be planned carefully. Good. The database management system is going to be responsible for managing its memory and moving data back and forth to the disk. Why? Because right now we know exactly the database management system know exactly what the structure, what the content of the data, how the data looks like. Okay, a database management system can't tell. Starting with today, we're going to see actually how it works. They said, "Oh, this is the page that's very important. Keep this one. You cannot get rid of this page." Okay. So in other words, if you take a look at a line operating system in order to use a virtual memory, you know, that if, uh, do the job of whatever the buffer pool maintained by the database management system, that the original system is not going to do a good job because they don't know exactly what the structure of the database, how it looks like the data looks like on the side. I'm going to revisit this one later, okay? So, there's an obstacle that the database general face in the problem of minimizing I mean, uh, the slowdown of moving data around, right? What's the obstacle that that faces in this case? There's a problem. I will try to minimize the slowdown of data, moving data back and forth, because I try to what? In other words, try to reduce the store. When a query engine looking for the page, or execution engine looking for the page, and the page was available in the main memory. So we have to fetch it. That's a bad idea. We try to figure out a better way here. The ideal situation that, we wanted to make that everything appear in the main memory. That's the optimal solution. So that means if we figure out the manual kind of technique, a way that whenever the execution engine looking for the base, the base is going to be available in the memory. It's already there. Okay? So another way to think about this problem, actually, we talk about, we can see the trade off between the spatial and the temporal control of the data. In other words, we want to have the database management system have full control over the spatial and temporal control of data, not the operating system. Okay? Maybe it's not clear. Let me first explain what do you mean by the spatial control 
and what you mean by the temporal control, okay? When you talk about the spatial control, it refers to where the pages are physically written on disk. That's the spatial control. Where you are going to store your data on disk? Where you're gonna write it? If it was scattered everywhere, or sequential, uh, uh, I mean, the data, related data can be uh, stored uh, next to each other, contiguous. Remember, we talk about the access, uh, uh, I mean, access time, right? If you're trying to access the data, for example, with the first block, how about the next block? If I put the frequent data access data next to each other, or the frequently used data stored next or close to each other, this in this case, I can reduce, I mean, the access time, right? The only thing, uh, uh, there is no seek time, there is no, I mean, notational delay. The only difference here we have to what? The transfer rate. We talk about the structure of the disk. That's one thing. So again, the spatial control just for reference, or I mean, to where the data are you gonna write the page of the data. The goal here: try to keep the data are used together as close as much as possible, or physically close, actually stored next to each other. That's the goal here. So, and we, uh, in other words, we talk about sequential. What the data is sequential? We reduce the input or random um, access to the data, and we increase, I mean, the sequential. Remember the goal, you try to make the illusion with the user that, that whatever the data they're looking for is available in the memory. There's an ideal solution of the situation, right? So if you put the data next to each other, when you pass read the first data, or find the first block, even if you look in the second block, it's not available in the memory, but I don't need to go through expensive operation to try to perform seek time or rotational delay, because I'm already at the beginning ready to just read the data. Of course, not compared with the data exists, but I'm going to reduce, I mean, the start all the time here. Temporal control here, we refer to what here? To make the decision. When to read pages into memory and when you're going to write back to the disk. When? That I need to have the database management system has full control, not the operating system. So in other words, where the data can be stored, the database management system, this is the one that's going to control that. Temporal control, when the data is going to be in the memory, when it's going to write it to the disk, it's not the operating system. The database management system, the one can tell when and who, which one. For example, if I need a space in the buffer pool, which page I need to affect to get rid the database management system, the one going to choose. I know the structure of the data, though I can have wide, better uh, selection, which page I can I keep. For example, we're going to see later the root index. When you have index, I will keep, I mean, the root of the index if you have a tree index in the main memory. Because every time I'm going to use the index, I have to start from the root, right? So this is the more frequent or most frequent, I would say, uh, what frequent you use page. So I will keep this one in the main memory. That's one thing. For the operating system, they, don't know, they, don't know, they didn't know anything about this one. They said, get rid of the space. Ah, I need the space. So we have a different place for policy. And the other thing we're gonna take a look later when you talk about the uh, um, transaction. When you have, the, for example, uh, we talk about we have, for example, multiple tra transactions. Our transactions will try to access the same data or the Windows system is gonna be cached. So we're gonna use the log entry. So in the log entry here, so um, if I leave the, I mean, the control for the database management system to decide this block that contains a log entry must be stored in the desk. Now, if I rely on the operating system, the operating system is going to say, oh, wait, no, there's still a space. And it's not full. Yeah? But based on the mechanism that I have in the database management system, we're going to see later when you talk about the concurrency to control and, and uh, uh, recovery, uh, uh, cost recovery, we use many techniques which allow us to know the two forms. So right now, we need to store whatever I have the data on the, de uh, on the main memory and the buffer must be back stored in the disk before you do change anything to the disk. So because I know what's going on in this data, decide when the flash, the, the data or the buffer. That's what we're going to see later. Again, the database management system understands its workload and can do better than the operating system. Okay? And the goal here, try to minimize for the temporal here what? The number of stars with the having you data from the desk. Okay? When it is sometimes if you keep the most frequent data in the main memory, so in this case, I can solve it all. Makes sense, guys? What try to achieve here? So what I need? I need the database has full control. Ability to control what? When the data get be written in the disk? When the data get be written in the disk? And also how the data get be stored on the disk? 
All this to do what? Try to uh, speed up the acts of the data and reduce the stall or whatever the, when the data is not available in the main memory. Okay? So we're going to talk about actually here first, what do you mean the buffer pool? I will define the buffer pool manager. Then after that, I'm going to take a look, uh, when you uh, define the buffer pool here, I'm going to take a look to different, to say, replacement policy. In other words, how can we do what is called, I mean, when I need space, for example, the buffer pool, I don't have a space here. How can you decide which base is going to affect, removed from the buffer pool or the place with the new one? Okay, then after that, we're going to see that this is not the only buffer pool that the one that needs memory. There is another component in the database management system that required to have in memory. So first, let's de define what to be the buffer pool here. Okay. The buffer pool design is what? Is an in-memory cache of pages read from desk. So it looks like you have a memory location you're going to allocate as a buffer pool. It's limited spaces. Not, I'm not going to allocate the entire memory. If I allocate the entire memory, I cannot operate. I, there's no space left in order to perform processing, right? So it's going to be limited space, allocated space in the memory. Or it, it's going to do what? It has caching copy of the page that read from the desk. The exact space is going to be copied in the main memory. Okay? Good. So let's go deeper with the definition of the buffer pool, how it looks like on the side. The buffer pool is going to be a region of the memory organized as an array of fixed size pages. So fixed size pages. In order to distinguish yeah, in the, uh, these pages, by the way, we call them in the buffer pool as frames. Okay, Why? In order to make sure it's distinct from the disk page, uh, pages. So here it's going to be what? Something like that. Actually here, I didn't want, need to draw this one, but assume that in the memory, in the main memory, I have a space here, and they have a speed, a frames. Frame 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the main memory, for example, and this is the buffer pool. The memory location. So each location, or let's say, slot or area here, is called frame. The size of the frame is equal to the size of the disk page, but we need to find a way in order to distinguish it. Between, if you use a frame or page, people may be going to confuse. Oh, what do you mean? It's the main memory or the disk or the buffer pool. So that's why we're going to use this one, a frame, okay? There's an entry and every single entry inside this array. Make sense? Good. So again, when database management systems start working, the first thing we're going to say, oh, to the memory, please give me, oh, the operating system, please, I need the space in order to use the buffer pool. And I'm the one that controls the space, okay? So when we have page, for example, try, uh, for example, we're looking for the page, okay? I try to figure out if I, I need to fetch the page in the memory. So here we have four slots used to be, right? So you can fetch whatever the page that you're looking for. For example, here in the previous slide, if the uh, execution engine locking for a page, there's nothing there, it's empty. So you have to fetch the page. For example, I want page one. So go down and fetch page one to the buffer pool, okay? So I like this one. Let's say this one, something like this. You say, you have the database management system. You say, okay, hey, I need, for example, page one. Okay, so we have the memory here. And this is the buffer board, okay? They have frames. If the pages exist here, they're going to say, here you go, this is address. If not, you have to fetch this one to the disk and put it in one of the frames. And after that, apply and say, here you go, this is the page that you're looking for. Good. That one thing so far. Okay, we have something else here. How can you tell whether the base exists in the buffer pool or not? So in order to search, right, the same thing that we did with the page directory, right? You said the base data is going to be uh, a file, going to be uh, organized as a sequence of pages, and going to be stored in the disk. Okay, randomly? No. We need to have like another data structure, the top of the structure that you have, with the heap structure that we have a file organization using this special data structure i'm going to tell me exactly how can I find which base is exist where the actual base is exist in the uh, stored in the desk which one they have enough space or how many space they have for example right this kind of formation that i need here the same thing here if you try to find whatever base in the puffer pool 
if there is no way to search, what I need to do? I need to ask the entire moment you search. Do you have page one? No. Do you have page two? No. Do you have page one? No. That's bad. So we need to have another data structure. One thing you need to note here, the order that you fetch the data to the buffer pool is not similar to the order that how the data can be organized on the disk. Because of the order of the buffer board, it depends on your requirement, your request. What page are you looking for? Yeah? So we cannot guarantee we have the same order. Good. Based the, the way that the page can be requested. In order the buffer pool works, okay, or to work, it must keep some metadata in the memory, yeah, in order to help the buffer pool to do the job. Okay, the first one we're gonna talk about the page table. We're gonna have like what? In memory or like a dictionary, okay, where each entry is gonna be mapping between the page ID and the frame number, okay? It's like a mapping between the page ID and the say and the frame number in general. So because remember, if you try to navigate your way in the buffer pool to see whether the page exists or not, the only thing you saw many frames, yeah? Unless you scan every single frame to check whether the page exists or not. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna build another data structure. This is show you page table. The page table the symbol has what? Simply has what? Mapping between the page ID and the frame within this page. It looks like I say, page one is the frame one. Page five, be, be, uh, go to the frame 16. So I can use like here, hash table, which is in order to build this one. So if you try to figure out to find out whether the page is exists in the buffer pool or not, the only thing you need to do instead, instead to scan the entire buffer pool, the frames here, just to check the page table. Let's see, oh, do you have the page five? No, then done, the page does not exist. There's no need to search here. You see, so it's simplified the process here. And so again, the page table is, gonna, is mapping between the page ID and also the frame number, frame one, two, three, four. At the same time, it's gonna tell me, or use it in order to tell me which the pages exist or not, can't they exist in the buffer board, I mean. And at the same time, the location of this page. Okay, so if you check the page table, a table maybe it has something like this here inside the page table. Maybe you do have the, the page ID, and here we have to say the frame number. Something like this. So let's say page one, we have the frame one. Uh, page two, the frame, uh, for example, page three, frame two, and etc. Oh, great. Another thing here. We have more data, but those are not enough. We are gonna talk about the replacement policy. And the replacement policy, the way that the buffer pool is full, we have all frames are occupied. And now we need to fetch new page to one frame. So what I'm gonna do here in this case, you have to get rid of one of these pages that's stored here. Which one are you gonna use? So we need to have uh, some extra piece of information. For example, one piece of information tell you that this page cannot be deleted or vectored because it's currently used by another uh, parse or thread. Okay. Or another piece of information, like a flag, and gonna tell me, for example, this page must be written to the disk before it gets, I mean, vectored. Because the last time, since the last time you fetched the page to the main memory, you modified. So you have to reflect the change of disk before you delete it. You see that we need some extra piece of information. By the way, those information that we have to implement during using, I mean, your uh, second coding assignment. By the way, I believe you receive email about the Fourier uh, server. They send me an notification email. They said they notified the student. They already create an account and they send email to the students. So if you didn't receive an email, please let me know. Okay, good. So we have now, we have two things. One is called the dirty page, and the other one is the pin reference number. So extra piece of information. Dirty page is like what? Something just tell me whether the page has been modified or not since the last time you fetched this one to the main moment. You read the page from the main memory, yeah? uh, from the disk to the main memory. Then you modify the content of the page. So this flag is gonna be set to one. Something has been changed in this page. So that means before you delete it, you have to reflect the change to the desk. Okay? That ident identification. I like this one. I don't know why they call this one dirty. You need to clean it? I don't know. The other, they say a flag or entry here, is the pin or they say reference uh, uh, counter here. 
Okay? Yeah, weird. Anyway, so in this case, you gotta do what? This an angel with the number, a track, how many threads are asking the base. For example, I have one process. For example, I'll use the C do an example here. There is a thread or the C process, whatever, working in the base three, X base three now. So I'm gonna have the pin and gonna say number here. One. There is one using this one right now. There is another one X is the same base. Two. Another third one using the base. Three processing or threads using the base right now. Once you done one process or thread done working in the space, I'm gonna use the number say by one. So that means here if the pin number is not equal to zero, that means please don't remove this page because someone else are working currently working in this page. So see another indicator tell me for example whether it's safe to remove this page or not. So the page table. The dirty flag and the pin counter is going to help me in order to have what? In order to make the puffer boom manager works properly. Make sense? And that summarizes here the page and the system. Good. So, We talk about the reference page. You can this example here. Let's have an example. We try to read the page, okay, from the main memory. So the first thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna use what is called latch. So in this case, for, uh, sorry, uh, before latch, you're taking the bin here. This is an example. It looks like you have a bin. This one. So what does that mean? Just simulate, simulate the process that you cannot delete this one because it's fixed. It's sticky. If someone has pinned this one. This you have to be here until you remove this bin. Good. How about, for example, you try to do what? You try to read new page. The page does not exist in the main memory. For example, I need to fetch this. I will try to do the same example, page uh, two. Okay, good. The first thing you're gonna do, check page two is not exist. You can check the page table, I didn't see. So what we're gonna do here, you have to put the latch. So reserve a place on that page table. Say, no one can touch this one. I'm going to fetch new page. But in the buffer board, then I need to point to this page from this point or from this location. Use this location to point to location of this page in the buffer board. Okay? So you put latch. I'm going to talk about the latch and the lock. Then after that, you fetch the page in the main memory, put to the desk. All right? Uh, sorry, from the desk to the main memory, actually. Then after that, update the address here. Now this one is going to point this one. Now we remove the latch. Why you put the latch here? Why you need to reserve space or location at the base table? You are not the only, assume that you are threads, okay? You are the, not the only one works in the data. So if you don't reserve a place here, there is maybe someone else is gonna fetch the base and but you use this reserve to, uh, the place that you didn't reserve. So you need to make sure, guarantee that when you fetch a page, there is a place in the buffer pool and also there is a place in the page table can use in order to point to the space. Because again, you are not the only one working at this one. There is multiple threads are running at the same time. Okay? Good. So, so it looks like we talk about multiple threads going to work with the X in the same page. Okay? At the same time, those multiple threads if they use X the same page at the same time, they may be cause the say data corruption. Yeah, maybe gonna change. For example, both of them they try to write or update the same attribute. For example, both of you ask the GPA, they try to modify the GPA or the student name, and they try to modify the student name for the same tool. How can you solve this problem? Usually, we do lock. Right, we lock the data. Until, in order to make sure that no one can access the data until the one that are processing or the thread that locked the data for update or modification down from the work, right? So, we are going to talk a lot, it looks like we're using lock and latch. So the question here, what are actually, what exactly mean with the latch and lock here? So lock and latch, there are two techniques used in order to protect the data in general. Each of them can be applied using different data structures. Okay, different data. So, let's take a look at the lock, the easy one. It's a high level, okay? A higher level what? Logical primitive that protect the database content. What is so? 
if you, you are familiar with the lock, right? Because you generally work with a database and you need to make sure that you need to lock your database if someone tries to act specific table or specific tuple. For modification, you need to make sure that no one else can access the data until I finish modification or manipulation of the data. So I will put lock in my data, right? So again, the locks is going to do what? In order to uh, responsible to protect the logical content of the database, which can be currently being modified to manipulate by another transaction. Okay, we're gonna see this one later when you have a concurrency control. You have a multiple transaction trying to modify or access the data. We need to make sure that for reading is fine, but if you try to access the data for manipulation modification, no, 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 no. I need only to have only one one pass one transaction or say one third can access this data for modification at a time. Okay, so once you're done, so again you can might be tuple, might be table, might be index, whatever. Okay, so. As long as the transaction is still working with this data, or this piece of information or logical data, the lock is going to be straight, okay? And we need to have the lock and have what? Ability to hold back, because here we have a transaction, and the transaction is going to perform a set of, let's say, modification to the table or the data or whatever, right? The problem is this one, what if the transaction failed? So we need to find and have an ability using, if you have a lock, in order to hold back, yeah? In order to say, okay, uh, looks like there is no transaction occurred at the first place. You see, uh, or back whatever the transaction did. Make sense? So again, the lock in order to uh, lock. I mean, protect. I mean, the logical content of the database like table, uh, tuple index. Latch is the other side. Is a low level. So it looks like not the high level data. but a low level that used in order to avoid. Uh, now it looks like I'm talking about the operating system action. Race uh, condition, uh, yeah, you know that. So that's what uh, mutex. Are you familiar with the mutex? You remember this one operating system? That's the mutex actually here. That's what I'm doing. The latch. So anyway, it's the lower level primitive that protect what the critical section of the database internal data structure. For example, I need to protect the base table. That's what I'm doing. Remember the base table, the mapping the base ID into the corresponding frame in the buffer pool. Uh, base directory, for example, this is content that you need internal representation, not I mean the logical uh, data like table and table, no, like the uh, internal data structure that belongs to the database. So, in this case, uh, for example, you try to ask the latch, uh, add a new, sorry, <coughs> I thought that. I thought they already muted. But anyway, for example, you try to, uh, yeah, you try to insert a new, uh, fetch a new page to the main memory. You need to make sure that you reserve space at the la at the page table, right? That I bought latch because I need to protect internal, I mean, uh, data structure. Reserve a space. No one can touch this piece of information or this one until I'm done fetching the data. Okay. Hold for the operation duration because I need to just will be affected until I fetch the base in the main memory. Then do you need to have a hold back? No. Whatever you do in the main memory, if you start your computer, then I don't care. If your system crash, okay, I can build my buffer board again. Yeah. So this there is no need to perform that. Okay. One thing I need to perform, I need to make sure that we understand here, just to try to, I mean, uh, make sure that we are the same base. Looks like we have a base table and we have the base directory. What's the base table and the base directory? What's the difference between them? In order to make sure that you, you are not going to be confused, okay? The base directory is what? Is mapping between what? Between the uh, base ID and the physical location of the page in the main memory. Of course, it has extra piece of information, for example, how many free space and etc. So you can check the base directory that's in the low level in the desk. Usually, have what? Base ID and here to say the physical location and of course with free space and such a different story. You just to make it simpler, uh, smaller. I mean, yeah. The base ID, for example, base one. There be to say disk five, cylinder two, uh, block two, whatever. This information exact way they didn't get be stored. Or let's say the simple thing you can see file one and offset two within that file. This information can be stored there, the physical location of the data. 
the base table is mapping for the base ID and also a copy of this base in the main memory, in the frame, in the main memory. Make sense? Okay. So the question here, we said the buffer pool is like the memory located in the, I mean, we are going to allocate the memory in the main memory for the buffer pool. How can we allocate that? Okay. So in other words, there are many transactions and the queries according to the database management system at the same time, right? You can, we have a concurrently communicate with each other, and etc. So the question here, how can the manager or the data, you say the buffer pool manager, choose which page is going to be loaded to the buffer pool? For example, I need to locate memory. When I allocate memory, that space, in this case, I need to fetch which page. How can I choose which page I need to fetch to the main memory? In other words, base, do we need to take a look to the entire picture, to the whole picture, to the global allocation parts? Was it going to tell you, for example, when I try to allocate a base in the memory, I will have a lock to all the active transactions, the working party, and I try to do the best decision base that help everyone. Or I don't care about everyone. I care only at specific transactions. That's what is called the local policy. So again, you have I mean, two options. Either I'm gonna, when you decide, for example, how to choose which space is gonna be loaded to the buffer pool. Okay? The buffer manager either gonna check, I mean, the global allocation policy or the local uh, policy or allocation, allocation policy. For the global policy, I need to take a look at the entire decision. Decision gonna be that, that help the best all the live transactions. Everyone work, we have multiple transactions running. So I see, take a look all of them and say, okay. Maybe I need to remove this page. Oh, this page acts by those transactions. Oh, keep this one. That's the global policy. The local policy here, making the decision based on what? That makes the single query or transaction running fast. So I didn't care about this one. I just care about this transaction. Try to do the best in order to help this query work fast. Okay? Good. Uh, most of the system are going to use the combination, both of them. We're going to revisit this one later when you talk about, I mean, different types of the buffer pool, right? But keep in your mind that it depends either on a global policy or local policy, with the way how can you choose which page is going to be fetched in the main memory, or located in the main memory. Good. One thing you take a look here, look at some optimization of the buffer pool. You are not going to do the optimization in the Coding. The coding, you have to create a memory location, then you have to take a look for example, how can you implement some replaceable policy? Well, I'm going to talk about this one later in more details. And you need to make sure the pin and the counter and the dirty page is set or not, you need to handle the situation. But the optimization now, I'm going to show you that now with the difference between the database management system and the operating system. Why the database management system can do better? The database management system has a lot of optimization that can be can be done in order to make I mean the process fast. We talk about the buffer board here. Those are the popular optimization. Okay. The first one, multiple buffer pool. We can have more than one buffer pool. And if you work with the database, you know that you can assign this one. You can increase the size of the buffer pool, and you can have multiple buffer pools that works at the same time. And you can assign buffer pool based on the database. For every, you have two, three databases open. For every single buff, database, I can assign specific buffer pool that handle this data, access to the database. The other thing, I'm going to talk about this one, okay? Uh, this one can help us in order to reduce the latch connection contention. Because if you try and try to fetch something to the buffer pool, since you have a multiple buffer pools, now maybe you don't have, I mean, uh, uh, when you try to, someone try to access this buffer pool, but the latch prevent anyone else to access that buffer pool until done fetching the page in the main memory. But since we have multiple buffer pool, now maybe one, uh, let's say, thread put one latch in the first buffer pool, the other one put the latch, maybe the other buffer pool. So that's okay. Okay? And also gonna improve the locality here at the same time, the way that how to organize and store the data. I mean, they gonna be next to each other. And more frequent data is gonna be keeping the buffer pool here. Uh, Prefetching, there's another thing we can do this one. Yeah, one other optimization, you can fetch data in advance. And we're gonna show you that now why the database is gonna 
do a better job than the operating system. In some cases, the operating system will be okay, but not in all the cases. Okay. Another thing we call the scanned sharing. That means in this case, it looks like you have one query running. Okay. Then now, if you uh, later uh, later time, there is another query, and and try to access the same data that has been accessed by the previous query. That first query is still running. So what we're gonna do in this case? Whether we're gonna start from the beginning or we say, oh, I need to access the data. Oh, there is the data available in the buffer pool. I'm gonna use this data once that the first query is done working. So I attach my query to that query, and whatever that query read, I'm gonna read it to my query. Once that the first one done working. And now I need to just to uh, scan or access I mean, the blocks or base that I missed. I will explain this one later in more details, just to give you an idea what kind of documentation that we expect. Pufferable bypass. That's one interesting thing. When you perform sequential scan, we're going to see that we're going to pollute the buffer pool. Yeah? So in this case, what we're going to do in this case, oh, I know that this process is going to do sequential scan. I'm going to allocate in memory location just in order for the reason or the purpose that this query can perform sequential scan. Whatever you're gonna scan is not gonna be entered to the buffer pool. It's gonna put in the memory location, another memory location. Once you're done working, I'm gonna delete it. Yeah? So let's take a look one at a time to see how can you do that in more details. So far so good, guys. Guys, oh, guys yeah. Just pinging the student. Good. So, multiple buffer pool here. What exactly means here? Again, we don't have to have only single buffer pool. I can have a multiple buffer pool. Okay? The one thing you can do here, you can have a multiple buffer pool instance. So, in this case, I, it's not based on the database. I have one buffer pool here, and they have another buffer pool. Maybe I have a three buffer pools. When you fetch the data to the buffer board here, the system is going to show you have a two different ways. Either we're going to randomly assign using the hash function or using the object ID in order to assign this page to the specific buffer board. So the data it looks like can be distributed to the fetched base among, for example, three buffer boards. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, you can speed up the accident. Or you can have a data uh, or buffer board built database. How many databases do you have? I have a two databases. For example, database one, I have buffer pool. And for the database two, I'm going to fetch all the base belong this page to the another buffer pool. So you have two different buffer pools to access the data. Oh, great. Why do this one? If we did that, it didn't reduce, I mean, the contention of the uh, latch. Because every time, for example, if you have a single buffer pool, you try to fetch data or remove data from the buffer pool, you're going to lock this one. So what's the latch? So prevent other uh, threads to access until that one done fetching the data, right? But here, if we have a more than buffer board, if I locked here or put latch here, doesn't prevent me another thread to access other database or buffer board to access the data, or the same situation here. We can have a buffer board per page type. For example, you have index, one buffer board just only for the index data. Buffer board for the, say, for the actual data, you see? Since we have different buffer pool, each of them is going to depend. You can adopt different policy. Okay, whether it's going to be local policy or to say global policy. It depends whatever the data that's stored here. Sometimes you're going to locate the memory location in the memory or the buffer pool space or number of frames and going to be only associated to the specific query or transaction. And the way that it's going to be available to anyone else, but only one who control when you try to delete, for example, page or add a new page, I'm going to take a look at that transaction and see what's the best that I can do in order to help you to run faster. I don't care about the others, other, so I'm going to do the local boss on these number of frames, okay? To enhance, I mean, the, I mean, the performance, overall performance, okay? I don't know what that did. Uh, slide to one. Good. The way that you use the multiple buffer board, IBM database 2, Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, allow you in order to use multiple buffer board. Okay. Now, back to the multiple buffer board. Remember, we said that we have what? We can use uh, here, as I mentioned here, uh, each base can be stored from one buffer board. 
is assigned to one of the available buffer ball. If you have a two or three here, so base is going to be assigned here or here or here. Based on what? Either you can use a hash function or using the object ID. Let's take a look one at a time. For the object ID here, if you take a look here, if you have the record ID, when you have the, uh, sorry, the page ID, the page ID or the data can be stored here, we're going to contain more information here. Okay, sorry, when you talk about the record ID, yeah, because not in the record ID, it's going to be page ID and the offset within the page. But for some databases here, you're going to have add one extra piece of information called the object ID. So the record ID equals an object ID, then here the page ID and the slot number. Yeah, we know that the base ID and the slot number within the space, that's we know that. The problem here, we add something else, extra piece of information called the object ID. So not every single database do that, okay? If you have this one, the object ID gonna tell you whether it's gonna be buffer. If you have a two buffer pool, we can use the object ID in order to identify which buffer buffer pool I'm going to fetch this page or find this page, okay? So every time this page, for example, page 15, all is gonna be in the buffer pool one. So when you fetch again, there'll be all in the buffer pool one, okay? That's one thing. The second one, or the easy one, you're gonna use hash function. This is the easy thing. How many buffers do you have? Two. Take the record ID, hashing, and you can tell, for example, where the page is gonna be, which page is gonna be, zero or one. For example, if you have two buffers, the, whatever the value that you have, definitely gonna be hashing. It depends on the number of buffer board. If you have five, it's gonna be a hash number from zero up to five. Sorry. Good. So that's what you call, I mean, the uh, multiple buffer board. How about we have what is called, I mean, here the prefetching? We did this one quick before, but now let's take a look here. The prefetching one technique, which based, in this case, the database management system can prefetch pages based on the query, of course. I know the query that, for example, looks like the square do sequential scan. Page one, page two, page three. Oh, definitely, they want to, after that, page four and five. It's prefetch page four or five in advance. So when that query looking for the page four or five, it's available in main memory. While the query processing these pages, I'm gonna fetch the next page, six, seven. If the if the, the query is done uh, processing page one and two, and it's it. Okay. This one especially gonna be effective when we as again when you're performing what is called sequential scan. Or sequential access actually to the data. Okay. So this one definitely hopefully gonna perform the uh, overall performance, which makes sense, right? Because now I'm not gonna do X, uh, seek time plus rotation delay. Actually, I'm not gonna do X time while I'm, I need to look for the page because the data is gonna be once I'm looking for is available in the main memory, right? Good. So let's take a look at the two examples, the sequential scan and the index scan. Assume that data here, okay? This is the, I need to access the data. Those are the blocks in the main memory, and the buffer pool allow me to have the frames. Of course, there's a page table, etc. We ignore this one, okay, it's for simplest. Good. We have a query, and the query one is gonna be what? Fetch the page zero. Does not exist in the buffer pool, so we have to fetch the main memory, from the disk to the main memory. Okay, process this page. Now the query one has said, okay, I need page two, because I'm doing sequential. X the data sequential. So we have to X zero, one, two, three. In other words, you have to X the entire blocks, right? You fetch the page one does not exist. You have to fetch from the desk and put it in the main memory. Now the system is saying, okay, the operating system, actually, even the operating system, you can say, okay, it looks like zero, page one, definitely page two, page three. Let's fetch this one in advance. Be fetching. So the square is still processing page one in the main memory, okay? So he, the pro, this Q, Q1 done processing page one, uh, page zero, okay? So the system is gonna say, okay, I need to fetch new pages, two or more than two pages, okay? So you can say, okay, I can fetch page two, maybe here, then here, page zero, I, the square is done working with this one, there's no need to do that. Now we do what is called the replacement policy. You get to this stage, assume that we're gonna use the one of the easiest replacement balls, the least recently used one, least recently used one, the one that you used for a long time, yeah, and you didn't use for a long time, that means this old packet, 
or blocked in the middle memory, so you can delete this one and fetch new blocks. You see now fetch these new blocks uh, in the main memory while the query is still processing uh, page one. Okay. Now the query said, okay, I need page two. Oh, it's available in the main memory. I need page three. Oh, it's available in the main memory. So while the query processes, for example, page two, now the system can fetch page four because they know that this part is already done for the page one. Now let's fetch in, in advance. Make sense? So again, the operating system and the database can do the same job here. We cannot distinguish between them if you perform sequential scan or access disease. So in other words, operating system can do the same job as the database management system. Can understand this one. How about we have a different query? Just to show you that, to convince you that when we keep in saying the database management system knows better than the operating system about the content of the database that can act faster, or be, I mean better. Okay, assume we're gonna do index scan. You know what the index scan is, right? I have, I'm going to build my index. When you work in the index, so the data that I wanna access is gonna be what? That contains different data, right? It's not, I mean the actual data, the total data, is the index data. Okay, so the top, usually in the index, we're gonna see this one next week. Usually when you build the index, the index contains two pieces of information. I mean, it's gonna be like a similar entry, index entry. Usually it has the search key and here the pointer. This is the entry, you have two entries. The search key, whatever the ID that, for example, here based on the value, and the pointer here is gonna be depends on the index that we have. Either give pointer to the block that contains the search key value, or pointer to the actual record, or the pointer to the record that contains the search key. Okay? And you can put this one in the, in the blocks. I mean, you have multiple of entries. And the, this is the same thing that we have. So that's why we have indexes page. And we're gonna, for example, use this index, and this structure, I'm gonna show you in the next slide, it's gonna be like a B plus three structure. And we're gonna see how can you use this index, or access index, in order to answer the square. I'm looking for the value between 100 and 250 from the, let's say, uh, relation A, okay? So this is my index, this is how it looks like. Usually when you have a B plus G index or in, uh, three star based index, we are going to study this one in more details later, yeah? And you are going to implement this one for the coding assignment four, if we have time to do that. I'm not sure about the coding assignment four, by the way. Anyway, so, I will start with what? You're gonna have the root. This is the first index. Then with the root, you're gonna tell you which subtree you're gonna ask based on the values that start it. Either go to the left or the right. Yeah, this is the simple version, okay, of the index. Then when you go from the left or the right, so the data can be sorted based on the attributes that you wanna build the index in the ascending order. So for example, you have a 50. Or let's say, uh, simple one, let's say 200. So that means all the values stored in the left subtree is going to be less than 200. Must be the value equal less than 200. All the values stored in the right subtree is going to be contains what? Greater than or equal to 200. This is the way how to build the index. And go down, down, until each the leaf node when you're going to find the pointer. Here the each one is going to be the actual pointer of the search key and the pointer to the record where the data is going to be stored. Okay? In order to use an index, you have to start with the first, the root. So we have to exit the first index, zero. Okay, that's what we did. Let me first back to the query. We said we need the value between 100 and 250, all right? So if you take a look at the index, it looks like basic. You start with the top, go to the left, base, you need to fetch this one, base, index page zero, then after that, index page one, then after that, page three and page five, all right? That's what you're looking for in order to answer the query between 100 and 250, uh, right? Yeah, okay. So I will fetch the root, okay, index base zero. Then the next page is gonna be page one because it's gonna be tell me that you have to go to the left, subtree, based on the value. You, usually, by the way, we have a range of query, all go with the low level or the low order or the lower bound of the value. You need to find the first node that contains the value equal val equal 100. Then after that, the nice thing with the P plus or B index, we're gonna see this one later, there's no need to traverse the tree up and down. Once you reach the leave node, you can jump, you have a pointer to show you the next node, the next node, the next node in the leave node. So you can't go this direction. Anyway, 
you build, uh, fetch the first index, zero. Then after that, you fetch the second index, one. Because you want to access the data. Now the operating system says, oh, zero, page zero, page one. Double this guy to perform sequential access of the data. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to fetch page two and page three in advance. Yeah? That the operating thing, system thing. But actually, the database management system knows better. Because now we're going to say, okay, page one. Now the value I'm looking for, 100. You see that in the page one, you're going to see this is a simple structure here of value. You're going to be 100 here. All the value to the left, less than 100. All the value in the right direction, greater than or equal 100. So definitely, since the minimum value 100, I need to go to the page 3. I know that. Operating system doesn't realize that. So can I continue sequential scan? So that's bad here. So the database management system is going to say, OK, now I need to fetch page 3 and page 5. You see that? Because they know the actual structure. Someone is going to say, "How? Why the, after we reach page 3, why jump to the page 5? How did the database tell? I know the structure. I know that if you're looking for something else, I know that the next one after page three is gonna be page five. Because as I said, in the leave node, we're gonna see later when we talk about the peer plus tree, the data is gonna be connected sequentially to each other. So once we reach the leave node, there is no need to go up the tree in order to figure out the next step. You just follow the uh, pointer to the next point or uh, 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 node. So in this case, you're gonna say page three, then page five. So the database knows. Operating system doesn't know. This was just an example to show you uh, what the difference actually between both of them. Okay? Good. The other thing is called, I mean, scan sharing here. So what does scan sharing means here? The scan sharing, just speaking, we have, for example, we have one of words, a number of words running concurrently or at the same time, maybe one start before the other one, then the next new query we try to run is gonna can use or share the same data that fetched by the previous query to save the time and space. We're gonna see how it works here. Assume that we have, by the way, it, uh, uh, it depends in whatever, I mean, database system that work with this one. Some of them use synchronized scans, okay? If you take a look to, uh, I think Bostergrass, they call this one uh, synchronized sub or sequence scans. They're different story. So every single database management system maybe have a different way to use this one or different names. Okay. Let me go back here. So we know this one is going to allow us in order to reuse the data achieved from storage. Okay. Good. So in this case, we have, it looks like we have multiple cores going to be attached to a single cursor. What do you mean by the cursor? Like a pointer, just show you me right now. Now we need to, I, I reach, I heard, for example, page five. Now the next one going to be page six, five, six. Now I read page six. Now the next one going to be page seven. So just uh, iterate over the blocks of the page and, and Every time we check the cursor, tell me exactly where the current location and how many bits are left, and etc. The quiz doesn't have to be exactly the same. In this case, for example, select the sum of the whatever from the uh, specific relation, or select count star from the same relation. As long as you access the same relation, but not the actual query, the exact query. Uh, some queries can use, I mean, share intermediate result. Not all of the database management system allow you to do that. Okay. So this kind of query of scan share, uh, fully supported by the database two, SQL Server, Postgres, they have different name. Uh, Oracle only support if the course is sharing for identical query. It must be the same query access needs in the data. Okay, let's have an example here. Assume that we have a query, select, I need to give it the sum based on this attribute from a specific relation. Select some, you know that you have to access sequential access the entire data, right? Okay, I ask this one. Make zero. Fetch this one in the buffer pool, the same structure of the buffer pool. I can fetch, they say, assume that I'm fetching the three bases, zero, one, two. Okay, this is query each here. Then done, assume this is query done processing page two. Now jump to the what? The page three. Now it's gonna do what? I need to get rid of one page. I'm gonna use the least, least recently used page 
the place of policy in order to decide which page you need to get rid of. So we're going to delete the first one. Okay. Now the page three is going to be stored here, right? I did this one. Now we have another query. This one, another query, is going to have access to the same data. This query is need to compute the average. I just give you this example of the query to show you that regardless from where you're going to start, at the end you're going to end up, the, you have the same result, right? We you know, try to compute the select, or we compute the average of the attribute value from the relation A. Regardless if you start from this page or this page or this page or this page, at the end, as long as it's kind of the entire relation, I'm going to produce the final result, it's going to be the same. So this query is going to do what? It's going to, if I said we don't have scan, uh, share, uh, scan sharing, I will let the query is going to start in the beginning, right? It's going to do what? I'm going to fetch or retrieve the page zero. I just uh, delete it. I just get rid of this one. If you delete this one, if you do this one, what are you going to do here? You're going to remove page one and bring page zero, right? In order to query two, it's going to be passing page to the page two. What? Zero. Then, the next step here, now I delete page one, okay? Now I need to X page one. So I have to fetch through the disk. That's bad. You see, you don't understand what's going on here. If we, do the, if we don't have what's called scan sharing, the good solution here is going to say, okay, since there is another query, is there only X the data? Okay? Now the query two, they can pass page one, page two, page three. Whatever data is available here, I can use them in order to pass. Yeah? At the same time, a jump, I locate myself, uh, join the cursor, or jump when, you say, with the key one, and whatever Q1 is going to fetch, I'm going to utilize it. So it's going to be connected together. And the query 2 is going to say, okay, I miss, I just start from page, for example, page 3. So that means I need to make sure page 0, page 2, page 1 to get to read them later. Or I just skip page 0. If I assume that page 1 or page 2 or page 3 is available in the memory, the query 2 can utilize them, pass them, then say, okay, there is missing page. There's no need to fetch this one from the beginning. I can just follow whatever or pass the data that fetched by the query one. Once I'm done, I'm going to get back to that one, the message base. So you see, get along, continue. Whatever this query one fetch, I can pass. Once I'm done, I can say, okay, uh, let's uh, make it up. Whatever I missed, I need to read the data. Okay? And here we have two scenarios. Either, for example, you miss base, only one base, or maybe you miss base 0, 1, 2, so you can read them later. Make sense? So you see that this kind of optimization, the database management system can do in order to speed up access to the data, in order to utilize whatever the data that you have, in order to perform, I mean, enhance the overall performance. And we'll try to do our best in order to have what? Reduce the number, minimize the number of disk with out of operation. Okay, or we minimize the star that if you try to look for the pages not exist in the main memory to fetch the main memory from the desk anyway. Okay. You can have another good well someone like I say, how about I said limit one hundred? Okay. Does that affect the overall result? No. Because this is a relational data model, right? A relational model. The relational data model they said the data is unordered and sorted. So, of course, it depends, when you say limit one handed, when you compute the average, depends where the location that you read the data. Either going to be from 0, 1, 2, or base 3, 4, 5. As long as they give me enough data, maybe you're going to have a different result. But for the relational data model, that's fine. Yeah, because the data is unsorted. If you want a clear, correct data, so you have to sort them. If sorted, that means it's a different story. The other thing we call, we talk about this one before, we call this one the buffer pool bypass. Okay? So, what does that mean in this case? That's mean when, just speaking, a new query, you are sometimes you're going to encounter what is called sequential scan. And sequential scan with the large amount of data. What does that mean? For example, each sequential scan, for example, at least going to be larger than the framework, a number of frames that we have in the main memory or the buffer pool. So if these pages are going to be that you sequentially fetch from the main memory, if you store them in the buffer board, this is going to cause pollution. What does that pollution? If you have using, let's say give you a quick example here. 
just to give you an example here. Assume that I have something like this, okay? I do have page, for example, specific page are stored here. Now assume that we have another, you need to page six, page seven, and etc. You fetch them up to page 10. Okay? So in this case, whatever you have data stored here, you have only limited space, only three frames to fetch the data, right? So every time, you, if you try to perform sequential scan, that means you are going to read this, all this data and must be available, put in the store in the puffer pool. So this one somehow going to get rid of some existing pages. Some of them assume that we have one page is like index page zero, for example. This is a very important page. This is the root page that I use for the index. This is the all every single time I use the index, I have to access this page, right? Now, if you use the buffer pool and use the way they say least recently used one, which that means if the page didn't use from long time, what does that mean long time? Of course, this page is going to be not exist for a long time. Why? I mean, it's going to be the oldest page that I ask. Why? Because I need to perform X, sequential X. Sequential X requires for me to uh, uh, reading fresh pages from, say, page 0 up to page 10 from this table. If I bought this one here, based on this policy, I'm going to get to this one. So the buffer pool polluting that is required for me to add, whatever data that's stored in the buffer would be deleted. The problem with the sequential acts of the data, I'm going to use this one only used only once. Because, for example, select a star or compute the sum or count the number of students uh, attended the class or registered for this class. Ask the entire data, collect the information, done, done. Do you need to ask them again? No. Most of the time, the data that after perform sequential acts of the data, I used whatever the buffer board of data only once, then done. So, in this case, in order to solve this problem, we can have something else. Maybe we can say, for example, I know this query is going to perform, let's say, sequential scan. So what I'm going to do in this case, maybe I'm going to locate a space in the memory. Yeah, it's, this is the buffer board. Okay. I assume that we have the, the query one. I locate the space in the main memory. So when you perform sequential scan, I'm not going to fetch the data here to the buffer board. No, I will put it here. So I'm not going to pollute the buffer board. And whatever you store here, once you've done sequential scan, you can delete this one and say, okay, done. I don't need to use this one anymore. Right? That's one thing. That's one option. That's what is called buffer board bypass. I'm going to allocate, let's say, uh, uh, memory. It's going to be uh, allocated for as a private memory to the user or to the specific uh, query and allow us in order to fetch the data and uh, perform the access, we say, uh, sequential access the data, whatever the fetch is gonna be uh, stored in that memory location. Once you're done, you can delete it. Or another thing, you can specify in the buffer board that for this query can access only two frames. For example, whatever this query fetch, only gonna be used as frames. So it looks like I cannot access the rest of the buffer board here. That's another way to perform, but it's not exactly the bypass. But the bypass actually just to allocate another memory location, just to fetch the data for that uh, sequential X. Once you're done, you can delete. Okay. So again, we skip the buffer board completely and store the page uh, directly, a page that you fetch directly to the main memory and the cache. Once you're done, you can delete. Um, another thing, uh, yeah, by the way, it depends on what uh, uh, some databases use this one, like Scan, Oracle, Microsoft, SQL, uh, Server, Postgres, they can support this kind of uh, operation. Buffer pool, uh, our operating system page cache. This is another thing here. Okay, so what does that mean here? Most operation when you perform for example or disk operation goes or go through I mean the operating system API. What does that mean in this case? Remember we talk about the different pages, the hardware page and the operating system page and the database page and etc. Right? And we said all of them are gonna be the same size in order to simplify the process. One thing, if you said you want a page in the low level operation, the operating system is gonna get involved. Yeah? Because the database management system is not going to control the mechanical 
movement of the disc. No, that's going to be done at the low level of the operating system. Yeah? So still we're working at the top of the operating system, but we try to do the most of the work except this one, minor stuff, okay? So in this case, whenever, whenever you fetch something from the, from the disk to the main memory, the database or the operating system always keep copying the cache. Unless you stated that, you said, no, don't leave a copy in the cache or the operating system cache. Okay, operating system has its own cache. Whenever you fetch something in the desk, you're gonna have, to have a copy. Or you need only copy in the buffer pool. So one way to do that, when you open the file here, there's a setting bit here. You can use all direct flag and set this one to the zero to say that or false. You say that, that means, please, if you fetch something from the desk, don't store anything in the operating system cache. Just direct this one into the uh, buffer pool. Which of this makes sense, okay? Eliminate, for example, the redundant copy. And the operating system and the database definitely they have a different uh, eviction policy or placement policy, they're all not the same. And uh, Postgres, the only one I believe that still relies heavily on the uh, operating system in order to handle the buffer pool. Although they have a small size of the buffer pool, but they still rely on the operating system in order to take care of the buffer pool operation. And this is one of the main difference if you try to think about what the difference between the commercial database management system and the open source. The commercial database management system do a better job. Okay? Good. Um, now the interesting thing is the buffer pool replacement policy. So this is the last slide, then I will continue this one next lecture here. What does that mean, the replacement policy here? I need to make sure that in this case, I need to fetch something in the buffer pool. The buffer pool is full. So how can you decide which page I'm gonna say, oh, now your chance, you, 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 you have to go. You have to leave or which one base I need to keep. Yeah, based on what is called a replace, that's what it's called, I mean, the replacement policy. Okay. So the, when you build the replacement policy, again, it's a software or algorithm component of the data management system that make decision in which page to affect, remove from the buffer pool when it needs space. When you design whatever replacement policy, we should take in consideration the following. Okay, correctness, accuracy, speed, and metadata overhead. Let's take a look one at a time. What do you mean the correctness? The correctness means that should, I mean, yield or produce, I mean, a correct result, right? So what does that mean in this case? Uh, for example, if you have one page, okay, that acts by at least one thread, I mean, the reference bit equal to, uh, let's say, five, six, or the counted five, seven, eight, whatever. Don't affect, affect this page. Don't remove this page because someone else still working in this one. So when you build your algorithm, you need to have to make sure that you have a correct, all will use the same uh, correct result. Don't affect, for example, the base used base by uh, the base count used by another third. And to that guy clear that reference and say, okay, I don't need it. That's one thing. Okay? Accuracy. What does that mean in this case? Should be accurate as possible. Okay? When choosing a base to be replaced. Well, so we need to choose a base, right? And when you choose a base, try to use the base that most likely I mean no one gonna use in the near future. Don't come up with an algorithm or mechanism as a replacement policy to choose the base that we're going to use maybe next operation. Okay? In other words, try to use the base that no one's going to use, at least in the near future. That's one thing. Speed. You have what? The replacement policy, suppose I will say, shouldn't slow down, I mean, the system too much. Of course, you're going to perform something, but don't delay. Don't come up with the algorithm that in order to perform the replacement policy, they're going to maybe spend, uh, takes one hour. Of course, I'm exaggerating. Right? I'm trying to come up with an unreasonable example. But we need to have fast. Because, I mean, remember, now we need to perform this kind of out operation. In the top of this one, we have too slow. I mean, replacement policy? No, that's too much. The last one here, uh, we call this one metadata overhead. What does that mean? Or in other words, low overhead. 
in order to do replacement policy, it may be required for you to store some metadata, some extra piece of information to help you to decide. Don't store too much information. I mean, in other words, don't store a huge amount of metadata, which is going to cause, for example, high overhead for the system in general. In other words, don't, for example, to load to fetch one block or come up with a basic policy, you're going to store, for example, one gigabyte, for example. Oh, it does make sense. Okay? So what I'm going to do next lecture, we're going to do this one to go over some techniques and those one, and I'm going to show you which one you're going to implement in the coding assignment. Okay, so we're going to go over these few techniques. Once you're done for this part, I think we're going to spin this one. Then after that, we're going to see how can we access the data. Okay, before some indexed technique and etc. Okay, guys, that's all for today. And hopefully enjoy the white color outside. I hate that. Hopefully the sun is comes, maybe tomorrow after tomorrow, to get rid of the whole thing. Okay, thank you guys. See you uh, next week. Make sure if you have a question, by the way, for the coding assignment, please reach me and reach the TAs. Okay? And start early, guys. Okay, bye.